Hey everyone, Chris Grandy here. I'm using my cloaking device because today I want to talk to you about internet security. So stay tuned. In today's video, we're going to talk about two very important topics that have come up uh, that I feel we need to focus on. One is identity theft, internet security. The other one is the problem of living too long. Longevity in financial planning. Should it be discussed more? Stay tuned. First, let's talk about um, internet security and identity theft. Let's get something straight. All right. Remember the target breach, the data breach from a couple of years ago? And 2013, actually. And then some of the other companies, large companies that had issues with data. Do they break into your internet account? No, those major break-ins happen at the company level. So understand something, even if you don't have online access to your credit card, you're still online. I don't care if you're 80 years old, 70, 60, doesn't matter, you're online already. So let's just get that out of the way, okay? Some people say, I don't wanna be online, you're online. So let's get that point square. Are we on agreement with that? The target breach happened at the corporate level, they broke into targets, internet uh, servers, data servers, you know, the big uh, uh, hardware that stores all the data, and they stole it directly from Target. They did not break into your account. So that's where the risk is. So let's get that out of the way. Second thing, I want, so with that in mind, I want to point out the second point, which is that I feel that the average person is more at risk from the paper standpoint than they are from the online standpoint. A lot of you, and I know this is you, because I've seen it, I know this is you. Uh, you have... Um, your online accounts, okay, and you, but you still have lots of paper around the house with personal stuff on there. And most importantly, you have that one sheet of paper in the desk drawer with all the passwords to your online stuff. Can't have that. I have ways around that, okay, I have ways that we can, we can eliminate having that sheet of paper with the passwords, but we need to get rid of that. So, want to get, we have a goal here by, by tax, by the tax season. April 15th, 2017. I am going to get on, if you're my client, I'm going to get on all your cases about having paper. And we're going to get rid of it as much as possible. And if you have to keep any paper, wills, trust, original copies, insurance policies, fireproof safe in the home. All right. I will do some research on some really good ones, what the latest uh, in the market is on that. Don't have that right now, but we'll get that. Okay. So that's going to be our goal next six months. Eliminate all paper. We just can't do it anymore, okay, folks? It's security. So just a couple, that's a couple things. So there's things that, um, where are we gonna do, where are we gonna uh, back up our stuff? Well, first off, we have our client portal. It's got a secure vault attached to it. We can scan documents in there. It's encrypted, secured vault, safe, safe place to store copies of your documents. And I also back them up in a couple of other secure places on, on Google Drive. Google's a very secure server. They have excellent security. Plus, uh, most of the sensitive documents, I also encrypt the document individually. So we have multiple backups for your documents. We can also access things like statements online. So we're going to have that stuff available. So therefore, you're going to have access to your data. It's going to be secure. You'll be able to access it from anywhere especially if you have a good mobile phone, but even if you have a computer connection, access it from anywhere, but it'll be secure. That's going to be our goal. So just so you know, for those of you that are, that go out and do mobile things, you use Wi-Fi at the library, you know, internet access at the library, you connect to your laptop, um, or you connect your phone, and such things like that. Uh, there's some added security for those of you that are a little bit geeky that we can do for your devices for security purposes. Before we get there, though, just realize that companies now, like, for example, T-Mobile, which uh, is a mobile company, that one of the phone companies are offering um, unlimited Wi-Fi hotspot uh, data to their, um, to their subscribers. So, in other words, that means that you can hook your laptop up to your phone and send an Internet signal from your phone to your laptop, and that's unlimited. You don't need to hook up at the library anymore. You don't need to hook up to those places. And a lot of times, something like T-Mobile's data network is faster than what you get to do with the library. But for those of you that um, 
don't get that or whatever, and you hook up, you're going to hook up to Wi-Fi at the library, you're going to hook up to Wi-Fi at a coffee shop at Starbucks. You, uh, there are tools that you can use. For example, uh, I wrote an article about this, so I'm going to share that below the video. But one tool that I like is a company called Cloak. And Cloak creates a virtual private network, sort of like a funnel between your connection, your laptop, say, and the internet connection. So that if you're at a public connection like at Starbucks, other people can't break into what you're doing. They can't um, crack into uh, your, uh, your laptop from that internet feed. So um, Cloak is a great tool for that. It creates a virtual private network. It's, it's pretty inexpensive. And uh, they give you a lot of leeway with that. So check out that article below. It's, I wrote it a few years ago. For those of you that are really into privacy, uh, it's something worth checking out. All right, so discussing longevity, the financial planning challenge of living too long. Now, joking aside, this is a serious issue. And when it comes to financial planning, and we talk about retirement allocations of building reserves, floor, upside and longevity, we're talking about the longevity allocation is really planning if you live past age, age 85, how do we handle the health care and living expenses at that point? Because with inflation and the potential uh, uh, inflation of just everyday living and then the rapidly inflating costs of health care, that needs to be taken much more seriously if we think we're going to live a long time. Now, Time Magazine had an article, I think it was last year, called uh, 2045, the year that man becomes immortal. And the idea of the article was that, um, that with the intersection of health and technology and nutrition and just knowing more about stuff, we're going to live a lot longer than we think we are. And they even say in the article that the first person to live to age 150 has been born. So if that's the case, there's a shot you live to 105, 110. And if that's true, we need to take that conversation much more seriously and do as hard as Spend as much work as we can on planning for that long-term type time frame and that's going to be a renewed focus it's really focusing on that longevity bucket to make sure that happens so it's something we're going to have a serious conversation about going forward uh, income past age 85 and really and I've talked about this with a lot of you but really a renewed focus on if you get sick and such what is your plan of care who's taking care of you where's the money coming from how is this happening and if you live past 85 uh, what kind of lifestyle do you want to have how do we need to uh, uh, you know, save and, and allocate for that? So uh, that will be a big discussion, and I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Hey, everybody. So thanks for watching my video. Thanks for coming by. If you like what you're seeing, press like. If you uh, are not a subscriber on YouTube where I publish these videos, resubscribe there because you'll get any other videos I do right away. I typically save one major video a month so far on my newsletter, but if you want to get my more frequent videos, make sure you subscribe. Also, subscribe to my newsletter. That's down below. There's a link to the newsletter and a chance to do that. And if you have any questions, please call, email me. If you have suggestions or things you want to talk about from a big planning perspective, like don't call me up and ask me an opinion on, on some stock. That's just that's not the purpose of these, these videos. Um, and I'm even trying not to spend too much time on, on um, you know, macroeconomic stuff, which to you guys is boring. I think it's extremely important to your planning, but that's really what you kind of ask me to worry about so you don't have to. So I know you delegate that type of worry to me. So I really want to talk about really core planning issues. Get any issues like that you want to talk about, please send me a message, hit me up. Go to my website, chrisgrandy.com, and check out more articles there. A company site, walnuthilladvisorsllc.com. And uh, look forward to hearing from you or catch up with me on social media. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.